can say that the brutal repression continues unabated. Uh, the last mass protest action in the capital resulted in one death and 89 wounded, some of them very serious. The success of the regime, that is the, the so-called security police, detained 58 protesters, among them 20 under 18. Since the coup in October 21st, 2021, 94 protesters lost their lives. Over 88,000 were wounded, some of them very serious, and over 17,000 are detained. These figures are provided by the two medical organizations, that is the Sudanese Doctors' Committee and the Socialist Doctors' League. The figures do not include the thousands of victims in that force, where the civil war continues with hundreds killed and thousands displaced. The Sudanese Communist Party is working hard together with the position committees, the professional alliance, and other civil and political organizations to reach an agreement soon in the charter that would include the program for the transitional period. However, the issues of wrenching power and overthrowing the present regime is high on the agenda of the opposition, especially what we call the radical forces within the opposition. While the mass protests demonstrations continue, linking the struggle to topple the junta with the other issues, including the demand for the release of political detainees, among others, preparations for the general strike and the civil disobedience are underway. What the Communist Party is trying to do now is not only to rebuild the broadest possible alliance or front, but at the same time, to have the nucleus for the front, the major forces which fought against the regimes, the Muslim Brothers regime since 1989, and who continued after the beginning of the present uprising, uh, shouldering the responsibility of leading the struggle. This includes the professionals, include the working class, the peasantry, uh, especially the students and women. In this process, uh, young people from both sides, especially what we call Kandakat, uh, this is young uh, girls and ladies, young women, played a major role in the struggle. Today, some of them are among the leading figures in the resistance movement, whether the resistance committees or in our party or other civil society organizations. Our main aim is to regroup this forces first, second, to prepare for the general strike, political strike. What we mean by that is another process is I started about a year or a year and a half ago building uh, the trade union organizations within the professionals, the working class and the peasants union. Uh, the main aim of that is this would form the basis for launching protest actions on specific issues regarding the main demands of the people. This would tilt the balance of forces in the sense that trade unions would play are not only communists but will play a role in defending the rights of the majority of the working people. And as such, new set sections of the population will join the struggle. That's why building the trade union movement again and strengthening it is one of the main objectives the Sudanese Communist Party, as well as the other democratic and patriotic forces. Reaching that goal would mean creating the basis for the general political strike. Once this is launched, it will be coupled with calling for civil disobedience, that means to sever relations with the present regime, not to pay taxes, not to follow any of its laws till it is overthrown. In the meantime, Wrenching power is not an easy issue, uh, but as we have seen in the past and we are seeing it now, cracks in the wall of the army, especially within the lower ranks, young officers or 
and soldiers being observed. Desertation from the army is one of the factual situations today, and that means the repressive organ of the state would be to some extent weakened if not paralyzed while launching the general strike and the civil disobedience. One can say resistance committees started to appear around 2010, that is, after the attempts by the regime to organize uh, national elections, parliamentary elections, and presidential elections, promising that uh, it would be fair and democratic. However, while the party was preparing to, and other parties, political parties, were preparing for the elections, it became evident that everything would not be as promised by the Minfasha Agreement of 205, which stipulates democratic and fair elections. Uh, the regime tried to create the elections which led to our party withdrawing from participation and declaring that the regime is illegal and we shall fight to topple the regime. That was in 2010. Uh, some of the political parties continue to have relations with the regime and in the absence of any democratic organized forces at that time, especially trade unions were dissolved since the beginning of the regime, uh, trade uh, students' organizations were also dissolved and brutally repressed. At the same time, the peasantry movement was at a loss. The Communist Party took the initiative of organizing uh, people in the residential areas, public schools and universities, as well as places of work under the slogan of resistance to the regime. That was in 2010-2011. And this is how the resistance committees started to appear and to work uh, among the people in the Sudan. But because of the repression, the resistance committees mainly uh, became active within the residential area since that time till recently. The resistance committees, which is composed mainly of patriotic, democratic, and revolutionary forces, including the communists, became very active not only in the capital and main cities, but also in the countryside. And through the network established with the help of the party, the resistance committees managed to cover more or less uh, most of the areas in the Sudan. That's why when conditions for the uprising were ripe, the resistance committees appeared as the main force in organizing the mass protest action. Of course, some of the political parties rejoined uh, the party just before the start of the uprising, like the Mono Party, uh, the Sudanese Congress Party, and so on. But the resistance committees, con since that time till now, are independent organizations, democratically run by its members, and taking its decisions uh, in a more democratic manner. While the communists are members of these uh, resistance committees, but we don't call them, they are not auxiliary bodies of the Communist Party. As I've stated earlier, we are trying now very hard together with them, the resistance committees, the coordinating coordinating leadership of the resistance committees and the professional trade unions, representatives of the working class, as well as the peasantry, the intelligentsia, uh, the civil society organization, to form uh, the broadest possible front. At the same time, to compose what we call a unified leadership. There were a lot of let's say, initiatives around preparing documents and charters and programs on how to organize the resistance to the regime and how to prepare programs for the transitional period after overthrowing the present rule of the military. Among the main charters or the main programs proposed are the charter proposed by the resistance committees, on which all the forces within the resistance committees play their role in, in the formulation of the charter. One of the main aspects of this charter is to rectify the mistakes 
committed by the documents which were prepared by the Freedom and Change Organization in uh, 2019. In the sense, for example, uh, regarding the power uh, institutions or the government institutions, in that uh, 2019 charter, it is stipulated that the power is consisting from sovereignty body, second, the executive government, and the legislative body. All of them were supposed to be appointed by the Freedom and Change uh, Organization. However, with the intervention of the, let's say, the Troika, the United States, including the United States uh, administration, pushing the African Union and uh, Ethiopia to play a mediating role, that resulted agreement to a partnership between the civilians and the military, which was refused by our party from the very beginning uh, in April 2019. And since then, people start speaking about an alternative, that partnership. And through, since then, many documents were circulated, and finally, the charter for the establishment of the People's Authority was proposed by the resistance committees, discussed by other political and civil sources. Now it is in the final stage of being launched. We tried to rectify, as I have said, the mistakes, for example, uh, of this 2019 charter, in the sense that instead of having a political leadership appointing the uh, Sovereignty Council and the executive government, this document stipulates first we will start by creating the parliament. This is the legislative body. Uh, the legislative body is expected to be formed by the components of those who would approve, approve the charters. The legislative body will then appoint a government as well as sovereignty council. And this puts the uh, what is lacking now, or what was lacking before, that the sovereignty council became so independent and uh, through the presence of the military people, managed to manipulate power and actually the main power rests with them rather than executive government. Until now, the legislative body was not formed, and that is one of the grave mistakes committed by the leadership of the Freedom and Change uh, Organization. Stated earlier, there are two levels of our activities. First, uh, it is what we call the strategic alliance and the tactical alliance. On the strategic alliance, we are, we are working very hard to reorganize and remobilize uh, the working class, the peasantry, and the intelligentsia, as well as the trade union movement, the youth and student organizations, and women. This strategic alliance, what we call the National Democratic Front, more or less is now being established and it is supposed to be the basis on which we have built the tactical alliance that is the most broad alliance which might include political parties of different orientations uh, other forces who would like to join the struggle against the regime uh, which would agree to the program for the transitional period in the meantime as we stated earlier again that the main objective of the broad alliance would be to prepare for the launching of the general political strike as well as the civil disobedience. What characterized the December uprising is that it was not only the people who were in the street or what we call the protesters, but it enjoyed the support of the silent majority of the Sudanese people and that's why that process was helped a lot by the direct and indirect involvement of the majority of the Sudanese people who are not members, either members or active in the field of politics. That is the only way forward for us now through building the trade union movement and mass organizations on the residential area, the working places as well as uh, institution of learning, reaching every citizen on the Sudan. Yeah. A Sudanese citizen making his choice to be part of the opposition would help a lot to lead to the downfall of the regime. The second important issue around this, by doing this mass work 
through the tactical alliance, we open the way for cracks within the regime and possibility that some of the officers, especially low-ranking officers and soldiers, would join uh, the opposition. This is our main uh, role uh, to topple the regime. Of course, the United States and the United States administration and imperialism are playing a major role in trying not to abort or stop uh, the uprising, but they are trying to make use of certain forces within the opposition, trying to impose a kind of an agreement in sections of the army and sections of the opposition, uh, which we term here as the soft landing process, which means by enlarging the social base of the regime through participation of some of the political parties as well as the armed groups, a broader base for the regime will be established but will keep the main aims of the previous regime, that is the rule of the parasitic bourgeoisie, which protects the interests of the United States and other capitalist and imperialist forces. Uh, the U.S., verbally speaking, they speak about uh, human rights, uh, support to the masses in the Sudan, but in practical ter terms, their connections with the military, as well as with the rea reactionary right-wing political parties, is very clear to see. And that's why, even today, after the invasion of Russia, to Ukraine, we are seeing that the regime quivering between the United States, Russia, China, the Troika, the European Union, etc. They are trying to find the best possible compromise with any of these forces so that they can be in power for as long as is possible. Unfortunately, the invasion of Ukraine has a very negative aspect. Uh, on the struggle of the Sudanese people since it became first, the first topic in the political mass media. Second, is that it reduced the interest of the United Nations, especially, on what is going on in the Sudan. And thirdly, it increased the possibility for the regime to find ways and means of contacting different conflicting and contradicting international forces like the United States, Russia, China, and the European Union, and making use of these contradictions in uh, trying to, to prolong their stay in power and to launch their, continue to launch their brutal repression of the Sudanese people. Uh, concerning Russia, first the Bashir, the previous regime, during its last one and a half years, tried to find ways of courting Russia, or China was always in the Sudan, of course. But Russia was another force to which the regime tried to court and maintain new relations. It started by the first visit of an Arab leader to Syria under the auspices of Russia. Secondly, al-Bashir himself went uh, to Russia and agreed or promised agreed actually to establish a naval base on the Red Sea in the Sudan for Russia. And at the same time, yeah, they also reached an agreement for the presence of the Wagner thugs to come to Sudan and help the regime to repress the mass, growing mass movement. Today it is the same. Uh, the deputy or the second man in the junta left to Russia and it was during the beginning of the war or the invasion of Ukraine, and he promised, first of all, he said Russia has every constitutional right to invade the Ukraine, and at the same time, uh, he sees that having Russia in the Red Sea, or the naval base in the, uh, in the Sudan, would help both sides. And uh, that's why Sudan now being tossed between the United States influence, which they see the presence of Russia as threatening their presence in the Sudan and their interests in the Sudan, would also try to compromise. Mm -hmm. 
briefly about the establishment of the Communist Party. The Sudanese Communist Party was established in 1946 through three main uh, outlets. One is the influence of the intellectuals or the Sudanese students who went to study abroad, both in England and in Egypt, and they returned to Sudan. Uh, they formed the first Marxist circles, and then some of them, led by the leader and founder of the Communist Party, Comrade Abdul Khalid Mahdou, went to Adbara. This is the city, mainly of the working Sudan Railways, that is the working class. They stayed there for quite some time and they managed to recruit leaders of the trade union movement and the working class to form uh, the first Marxist uh, cells uh, in that city. Uh, the second is, is the influence of some of the British intellectuals officers and lecturers at the Khartoum University College who also helped to develop themselves within the student movement and lecturers at the college. Uh, and the third influence was direct coming from those local forces who read about the Russian Revolution and the Bolshevik success in establishing the Soviet Union. All three uh, joined together and formed the Communist Party, or what we, was called in 1946, the Sudanese National Liberation Movement, which developed in 1953 into the Sudanese Communist Party. Uh, since then, uh, uh, the party became uh, the main force behind the new productive forces, uh, reorganizing the working class, the peasantry, the student movement, the women's movement, and the youth movement. Uh, during its history, it has been subject to repression. Actually, for the past 75 years of, of its existence, the party was only legal for 12 years. And this shows how the repression and undemocratic and illegal work of the party has hindered its development, its national development into a real force. Now, I think during the struggle against the first dictatorship, second dictatorship, and the last dictatorship, uh, the party has played a major role in toppling the two or three dictatorships and now it enjoys the support of the masses. Suffice to say that the slogan of the uprising, December uprising, this is freedom, peace and justice, was the slogan of the Sixth Congress. Egypt, Saudi Arabia and the Arab Emirates are working together to reach a kind of a settlement using certain political parties like the Uma Party, the Sudan Congress Party, the remnants of the armed groups plus sections of the army to form a new partnership between these forces to reach a settlement by which, let me say, a semi-democratic civil military regime would be established to abort uh, the revolutionary process we are uh, passing through and at the same time to create a regime uh, which are attached to international capital succumbing to pressures of power of our neighbors uh, succumbing to these pressures in the sense not to present an example uh, a democratic example that would attract the attention of the peoples in Egypt Saudi Arabia and the Arab Emirates this political settlement, uh, which is being uh, hatched, uh, is the alternative presented by the youth imperialism and their allies, be it in Europe or in the area. We are fighting against them and we are sure of our people's uh, resilience uh, to face such conspiracies and defeat them. It's happened in the past and it's happening now and we are sure of our strengths in defeating such schemes. In addition to that, we enjoy the support and solidarity of the democratic forces all over the world, and we hope your journal will contribute to the solidarity of the struggle of our people. Thank you.